final thing probably to mention is just a little bit more about the cloud. Now I mentioned when you make up a new project you have the option there of syncing up settings. You can do it from inside the program. So you can see here I can go down to file and then choose my user account and it says sync settings now in which case I click on that. It asks me what account I want to sync it with and obviously you put your password in and then it goes off and it syncs the settings with the cloud. So this is very useful if you use three or four machines because you can just say right I want you either to take my settings I've got here and upload them I want to download them so this machine is then synced up with the way all my other machines are set. You've got to restart the project and then it reopens up Premiere and now any changes any preferences that are in my cloud settings are now on this machine. For example I always set up a keyboard shortcut so that if I press the P button it gets me to the playback settings because I'm forever turning things on and off with my Blackmagic or Matrox devices. You have a sync option there you also have a sync setting button down the bottom there and of course you can get to other settings for your creative cloud account there as well. With a perpetual license and you can still buy a perpetual license of CS6 if you want to you can't get this version on a perpetual license that's where you pay for it once and never have to pay again. You can only get this version if you want to go onto the subscription and play Adobe a certain amount every month. But with a permanent license you've got a serial number, you stuck it in, it activated and that was it. On a cloud version, like this one, the computer has to go on the internet every so often to verify the license. It's just part of what it does, you have to go on the internet to verify the license. After about a month you've got to put it on the internet but you've got about 30 days to do it between when it's due and when it actually times out. So you've got plenty of time to make sure you just pop it on the net and get it activated. Now with a serial number and a permanent license, you are allowed to install the program on two different computers and get it activated on two different computers. You're not allowed to use them both at the same time. The idea is you have one on a desktop and one on a laptop, but you are allowed two activations. If you wanted to deactivate it off one machine and then reactivate it on a third machine, you could do that. Well, it's the same with the cloud and your Adobe ID. At the moment here, I am signed in as David, but if I come up to help and sign out, that's logging this computer off. It's deactivating Premiere. I am now signed out. Although I can still carry on use it for the moment, if I then shut it down and go back into it, it's gonna say, you really need to sign in. Now, if my machine is not on the internet, I do get the option of signing in later. And it will let you use the software for a certain amount of time. I think at the moment they're adjusting the amount of time. I think it's currently 30 days. They're going to make it a bit longer. But they'll let you use it for a certain amount of time before you have to sign in again. But you will have to sign in at some point. Now you've got your two sign-ins. Imagine you have signed in on two different computers and they've both gone horribly wrong and you need to sign in on a third one. You need to set it up again. When you go to sign in, it might say, hang on, this is activated on two other machines. You have the option at that point to say, well, kick both of those out and activate this one, please. The whole signing in process has made it easier to get around problems caused by hard drives going wrong. Now you're not allowed to do that too often. You are allowed to sign in and sign out as many times as you like. You're not allowed to automatically deactivate other computers that often. But generally the process of using it, as long as you're happy to connect your machine to the internet, generally the process of using the cloud is actually pretty easy. You do get other benefits of being part of the creative cloud, but you don't have to use them. Some people have believed that actually you're editing entirely on the internet. No, you're not. You're basically having a machine, which everything's on your machine, and it has to go on the internet occasionally just to authorize it. But apart from that, you don't have to go on the internet at all. You don't have to put anything on the cloud. They give you a bit of space. You don't have to use that. You don't have to sync up your settings. So it's like a perpetual license, with the one exception that you really do have to connect your machine to the internet at some point. Now for some people that's not an option, they're going to come up with ways of dealing with that. But if you're interested in that, just talk to us about that and we can tell you what the current situation is. So there we are, that summed up some of the nice new features that you've got in Premiere Pro CC. Like I said, you can only get that if you get the Creative Cloud. You can't get this on a permanent license anymore. CS6 is still available with a permanent license, which you can buy from us at DVC. If you want the Creative Cloud, you have two options. You have the Creative Cloud for individuals, which you can only get direct from Adobe. You can't buy from us. And then you have the Creative Cloud for Teams, which is a version which has been invented for businesses. Now, the major advantage of Creative Cloud for Teams for businesses is that 
the business gets control over the licenses. They're not tied to a particular Adobe ID. You can say who can use them and who can't. You also get more web space and you get a bit better Adobe support, but the major thing is the control of the licenses. Now, if you want to know about Creative Clouds for Teams, we can happily sell that and we can explain more in depth. Just give us a ring or send us an email or pop down to the office for a chat and we can sign you up to Creative Cloud for Teams. There's lots of nice advantages to do with that. If you just want the individual ones, which is a bit cheaper, then you can only get that direct from Adobe. But you'll still need a nice computer to put it on and of course that's what we have been doing ever since we started in 1995 is making really nice computers that work very well with your software and of course we've been supplying adobe premiere since we started in 1995 so we know it really well so even if you're getting your creative cloud software from adobe come to us at dvc we can make a system for you we'll install your creative cloud software on it activate it test it and support it as long as you're getting the system from us, we'll still support you if you get the Creative Cloud software. Please give us a ring or an email if you want to know some more. So there's a lot of changes inside of Premiere. They're all small ones. They haven't added stereoscopic editing, for example. They just souped up the way it's working. Now I'm making up this video at the end of May. 2013. The Premiere CC versions are supposed to be coming out on the 17th of June, so we're a couple of weeks away and we've just been given an advanced version so I could make this video to show off to you. Probably in a month or two's time it'll be outdated because one of the things that happens with the Creative Cloud is that you don't just bring out a version and then wait for another year and bring out another version, they'll bring out changes to the program as they need to. So who knows, a couple of months down the road, we might have some more features added in. It'll change and evolve as you use it. You won't have to wait every year for some new feature to come along that makes your workflow better.